Hey guys, so today is Saturday. It is a strange day to start the vlog, but this week has been interesting. It has been very busy and I am literally just about to head out the door and go to Manchester for my best friend's birthday. So before I did that, I thought I would let you know what I'm currently reading, what book I am taking with me. Ending the vlog yesterday actually kind of worked out really well because today is the 1st of June. So we are working with a new Bukopoli TBR. Now I normally work through one Bukopoli books in order, but I am doing Ghibli a thorn. Like I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do Ghibliathon. So I've moved some of my Bookopoly books into the TBR for that. And so the first book I'll be reading in June is my second Bookopoly role to read a mystery or a thriller and that is There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. All I know about this is that it is like a slasher horror movie in book form. I've heard like pretty mixed reviews about this. The general consensus is that it's pretty average but I think it will be a fun fast paced read and I'm kind of wanting to read through some of those books on my shelves that I don't think I'm gonna love or that I kind of just want to read once and don't think I'll ever reread so I will unhaul them as my shelves are pretty full and I have two stacks of books on the floor and nowhere to put them. So I did actually start this at like 1am while I was having a snack before I went to sleep so I am on page seven and it was kind of creepy actually so far. A girl comes home from school there's an egg timer on the porch and she's really confused so she puts it back in the kitchen and then after she's eaten a sandwich it's moved again and that kind of like typical slasher stuff. So this is what I'll be reading on the journey today and over the weekend I'll let you know as I go how I'm enjoying it. Aside from that I am also currently reading The Queens of Inneslia and I still don't remember where I've put it because I haven't had it since Monday. I am going to pursue that right at the beginning of June. It's just with me traveling, that's a big hefty hardback, it's really dense. I want something a little bit smaller and lighter to take with me for today and tomorrow. So I will be starting this. This is only like less than 300 pages so I should finish this pretty quickly and then I can pursue The Queens of Inislia because I am really enjoying that book. It's just big and slow and with having such a busy week and a busy weekend I've just put it down just for a little while. So that is how we are starting off the week and the month. I'm gonna head off now. I have around a two and a half hour drive ahead of me. We're gonna stop midway and get some food and I'm going for a night out. So hopefully there won't be too much drunk and messy vlogging, but I can't promise that. Hey guys, a long time no speak. So it's Monday today, I survived a weekend in Manchester. One thing I will say about drinking, because I don't go on nights out very often anymore, is that I really love listening to drunk people's arguments because it is the most incomprehensible, unbelievable shit that you could ever think of and they're just screaming about it outside clubs in the street. So that was fun. I didn't get too drunk. I wasn't too hungover yesterday but by the time I got back I kind of was the level of hungover where you have a dehydration headache in the morning that disappears but then you're also like really tired because I did only get like five hours sleep. So when I came back I pretty much just vegged and played Xbox. I also did a little bit of reading and I have a reading update for you today and it is surprising actually. Not surprising that I'm giving you an update because that's what I'm here for but 
surprising what the update is. So I am currently on page 254 of There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. And I just realized I look naked. I'm wearing a vest, like I'm not naked. So when I checked in with you on Saturday morning, I said that this was a young adult thriller that's like a slasher movie in a book. And that's true. It is um, very accurate. It's exactly what is described on the tin. I'm not gonna give you too much detail on the deeper plot of this because that is pretty self-explanatory. It is just a slasher film in book form. But we follow our main character, Makani, who is biracial. She's half Hawaiian and her mother is of black descent. And she has moved to a new town in Nebraska. She's been there for over a year now, but she's still considered the new kid because it's a small town. And she was essentially running from something that happened in her past that she got a lot of abuse for online and also in her Hawaiian community. So she comes here with a dark past and that's all very mysterious. Like what was it she did that was so bad? All the while there is a serial killer on the loose who is killing high schoolers in particular. They are hunting down people who go to the high school and Makani, this boy she has a crush on called Ollie and her two friends Darby and Alex are trying to figure out what these people have in common, who the next victims might be and who the killer is. So what I will say about this is that I really like it. Like I, I didn't expect that I would, but while I'm not gonna stand here and tell you that this is a literary masterpiece, because it is not, it is definitely what it says on the tin. It is a fun slasher movie-esque book. It is pretty much exactly what I need in this moment. I said in my Bookopoly video that I am pretty burnt out on big, long, slow fantasy books. So this kind of thing is exactly what I wanted to get me a little bit more motivated to read at the minute, because with all of the stress combined with trying to get through my TBR last month. I was just really feeling like I didn't really want to read. I wanted to do anything that had nothing to do with YouTube or reading. I literally just wanted to veg out and hide all of my books. But this has like helped me. I suppose you could say I was in a reading slump, but I don't really slump because I forced myself to read, but just the feeling wasn't there with the books I was reading because of all of the stress and this has reignited that. So that's all I can really say about the plot because it's pretty basic there's not a whole lot going on here but there is a whole ton of diversity that I didn't know about when going into it I'm not sure that I've really heard the diversity talked about in here but we do follow a biracial main character in a mostly white town and as a biracial person who grew up in a mostly white town I feel like the representation here is kind of accurate there is like a big question about how she stands out and people ask her like what are you and not necessarily in a malicious way they just don't understand that they're being rude kind of way which I don't think when I was growing up I didn't suffer any particular like racism. Nobody was like disgusted by my presence because of the colour of my skin but I definitely did receive a few of those invasive questions like what are you? Are you tanned or are you half cast kind of situation? So I feel like that representation is fairly accurate and as well as that one of Makani's best friends is trans which trans rep is something that I don't see a whole lot of in books. I can only think of one right now and I like that that is present in here. Aside from that it's just really fun, it's really fast paced. What I will say about it is that I I'm on page 254 so I have 30-ish pages left and I think that you find out who the killer is a little bit too soon because the way this is told is that you kind of have a chapter in the perspective of whoever's going to be the next victim as they are being murdered and then you have like loads of stuff where you're following our main character Makani and then there'll be another chapter of somebody else gets murdered and every time somebody got murdered I felt like we discovered something new about the killer and I wanted to kind of piece it together myself I was hoping Hoping that it would be a more glamorous reveal than it was. So that's the only thing about this that I'm not loving so much but aside from that while it's not like a masterpiece it's really damn fun and I'm loving it. So aside from that when I got back yesterday this was on my kitchen table and this is something that I purchased. I did have a look at it because it's in a really flat envelope and I was really confused as to what it was but I essentially bought this because it is from a fellow booktuber's shop and I wanted to support her. I don't think that she knows that it's me that bought this because she put my full name on this cute little tag that she included but this is from Brit's shop from Basically Brit. Her Etsy shop is called Basically Brit. I will put a link in the description box and she makes bookmarks and prints and she had a 20% off sale so I thought I would order something to support her and the little tag says hi Rebecca thank you so much for your order happy reading Brit so if we just whip this little little bow off it's so cute that she does this I don't do anything this fancy with my orders you want cute packaging like this then Grace and Honey is not the place to go okay so I love galaxy prints so naturally I want this one and it says books are magic and we have 
the planets. So this is super cute. Thank you very much, Brit, for providing an excellent quality bookmark. It is on kind of like not quite thick cardstock, but it is like very good quality thin cardstock, if that makes sense if that makes sense so yeah thank you so much Brit for providing a beautiful quality product and I've dropped it in the window and today when I got home I had this I know what well I don't know what it is I know who it's from apparently Gav told me that Bookopoly was my 300th upload which is intense because it hasn't been my second booktube birthday yet my second booktube birthday I think is in July so in under two years you've had 300 videos from me which is seriously intense and we all know Gav we all love Gav he loves buying books he works at Waterstones he gets 50% off discount and he just spoils us for some unknown reason so he sent me a book and he said it was for my 300th video so I haven't looked at this yet I'm just like holding it and fondling it but we have a note that says congrats on hitting 300 YouTube videos my love from Gavin and dun, dun. <gasps> it's my best friend's exorcism by Grady Hendrix. So he's been snooping on my wish list. Thank you very much, Gavin, for this. I hope I can get to it soon, but you know, I say that about everything. I just love the aesthetic of this book, how it looks like a VHS. And something I noticed recently, I thought it would just kind of look like a VHS, but it's actually marketed like it is a VHS, if that makes sense. It does say VHS at the bottom. And these stickers, like they look real and it looks like it's been creased and battered around the edges. So this is another slasher horror type book, and this is about a girl whose best friend becomes possessed, assumedly by the devil or some kind of demon. I really wanted to read this because I saw this on Natasha from my Reading with Odds channel, and it looked super interesting because look at it. And then Cody recently read it, and she gave it a really good rating, so I stuck it on my Amazon wish list, and it is now in my hand. So thank you very much, Gavin, you beautiful bean. Now that I'm reading There's Someone Inside Your House, <laughs> I'm like 10 times more excited to read this. Like I was excited before, but it was mainly like a cover thing. Now I'm really excited to read it. So that is all I've got for now because I'm gonna tell you the real reason I'm here and that is because I am procrastinating filming my wrap up because I talk too much about books, as you can see from the length of this update. So I'm gonna go set on my ring light, etc get this wrap up done and I think I'm gonna finish this tonight. So I probably won't check in as I've just given you an update on my thoughts but I will come back tomorrow and let you know what book I've picked up after this and my final rating and thoughts. Hey, so we are back in the same location again. We have a lack of diversity in the filming locations of this vlog, but I'm just gonna close this because it's really windy out there. Yeah, we have a lack of diversity in the filming locations of this vlog, but honestly, this window, I have somewhere to put my camera and sunlight, which is always great. So just for ease because I've, I'm doing a lot of filming this week. We're just gonna update over here. So last night I finished There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins pretty much just before I went to sleep. I gave this four stars. I thought it was really fun. It was exactly what I need right now because I was virgin on a slump and just feeling really overwhelmed with everything, including reading during the end of last month. So I really just need that boost from flying through some fast paced reads. So this definitely did the trick. I gave it four stars. And you know, yesterday, like I said, I wasn't talking about the literary merit of this, but considering that it is marketed as a horror slasher in book form, it definitely delivers on that. And I don't, really see what it could have done much better. I mean, there was a lack of feeling in the characters. Towards the end, people like dropping like flies, including some of the side characters and the main character was like kind of unaffected by it. So things like that could have been improved upon, but like in a horror film, nobody ever mourns the death of the best friend because they're more concerned about their own survival. So that was pretty true to how that thing kind of goes. So four stars for this, really enjoyed it, what I needed right now. And yeah, I would recommend if you need help with some fast paced reads. So today I picked up Thunderhead by Neil Shusterman. So excited for this. This is my third book properly role to read a book set in a dystopian world. And also this one was my second one to read a mystery or a thriller. Just letting you know about that. So Thunderhead is the second book in the Ark of a Scythe trilogy. The last book is out in November and I'm so excited. And this follows a utopian world where humanity has conquered death 
and the only way that you can die is if a scythe gleans you because even though this world is a utopian people still gotta die because of population control so the scythes are not under the normal jurisdiction of the rest of the world which is governed by the thunderhead which is a huge artificial intelligence that contains all of the knowledge it did some really helpful stuff like fixed global warming and brought a lot of species back from the edge of extinction so the rest of the world is governed by the thunderhead and then the scythes have their own governing body because the thunderhead believes that those made of flesh should govern their own so the matters of life and death should not be on the thunderhead's head so the first book has been one of my favourite books of the year so far. I absolutely love Scythe. And my favourite thing about this series is the world and the complex politics and the way everything happened, like how we got from this civilization to the futuristic idyllic setting in these books and another one of the things i really liked is at the beginning of each chapter you get a little bit like this and in the first book they were diary entries from some of the scythes in this book they are the musings of the thunderhead so how the thunderhead does what the thunderhead does and you know maybe the thunderhead does not work as infallibly as everybody thinks it does so i am already i started this today 125 pages into this rachel and jade are supposed to be buddy reading this and rachel commented on my june tbr and was like oh we should triple up and i'm like girl i'm gonna read this in two sittings like i can't buddy read this like i can't hold myself back so i am enjoying this immensely i love it it's so fast paced it's so riveting i adore the world of this and there's some great morality in this we have characters following the path of good and then like characters following a vigilante path where they are kind of walking the path of good but in a more chaotic kind of way and that's something I really love about it. This series does contain unnecessary romance but it's not too intruding on the storyline so it doesn't hamper my enjoyment of the series. So I'm currently reading this and absolutely adoring it. I was supposed to be picking up the Queens of Inneslea again tonight instead of Thunderhead because I don't have an ebook for the Queens of Inneslea so I can literally only read it when I'm at home but I'm enjoying Thunderhead so much that I'm not sure if I can so I will let you know tomorrow or further on in the week what I decided to do but I need to go and film my Ghibliathon TBR which is why I'm wearing makeup again just honestly one weekend away and I have so much to catch up on. So I'm gonna go do that and I'll let you know if I continue with Thunderhead or pick up the Queens of Inneslea or what sometime later. Hey 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 just a quick little update to say that I received a book in the mail today and the book was Confessions by Kane Minato. I already opened it like I didn't do an unboxing in the vlog because I knew that this was coming and I knew as soon as I saw the label who it was from but this is actually a traveling book. Last year I did like a low-key Throne of Glass read-along where I started a Facebook group chat and we all read Throne of Glass at the end of last year and I ended up gaining my first booktube friends and some of my best booktube friends from doing that and we decided to start a traveling book so Naj was started this and Dora from Confessing My Reads and Leah from Leah in 26 Letters has or have already read this so it is full of sticky tabs and let's just use the camera like a normal camera for a second it's all annotated and stuff. I won't linger too long so you don't get any spoilers or anything. But I'm really excited to read that. I might try and fit it into this month's TBR because I'm doing really well. Also, my Ghibliathon TBR, I need to start editing that when I come back from yoga. I'm dressed for yoga right now. But if I read all of those books in that week and finish what I want to finish this week then I will have read nine books by the middle of the month which is intense and for the last two weeks I'll have to read like my three buddy reads and also the last two books on my book hopefully TBR which if I've read nine books in the first two weeks like I should be able to manage five books in the last two weeks but I would really like to fit this in I literally know nothing about it apart from it's seriously fucked up and I kind of want to go into it blind at the time that we selected this for the traveling book I had heard nothing about it and and then we didn't do the traveling book for ages like Nigel selected the book and then just never read it so months later she actually started reading it and got near the end and then I saw it on Chelsea Dolan's Reads channel and she said it's seriously fucked up the way that we're doing this we're all eventually going to have started and started to pass around a traveling book and we're kind of going off like random books that we own that we literally know nothing about and that none of us have read so I literally want to know absolutely nothing about this and all I've heard is that it's seriously messed up so I'm excited to read this and hopefully I will be able to to sometime in the near future if not this month I will definitely prioritize it for next month and when I am finished I will pass it along just gonna do a quick reading update because I don't really have any thoughts to tell you but while I'm here I am on page 351 of Thunderhead by Neil Shusterman I have read 228 pages 
today so I'm really enjoying this as you can tell I can't put it down I'm not gonna say much more on it because I'm pretty sure I will be finishing this probably tomorrow so I will tell you all my thoughts when I wrap this one up I also read just one chapter of the Queens of Inislea last night and I'm really enjoying that now that I've picked it up again motivation was a little bit low because it is like quite slow paced and not a lot has happened so far but I read one chapter and once again as soon as I read that chapter I was like I adore this book the only problem is like I'll read a lot of this after I've made dinner and stuff I'll edit a video film a video go to the gym whatever it is that I have to do then I normally come home and I play like an hour or two of Xbox if I have time and then I get into bed and read so I'm only picking up Queens of Inislea like right at the end of the day and then I read like one chapter and I'm really excited like oh my god I love this book I just want to read a whole chunk right now and then I realize it's like 30 minutes past midnight and that I need to go to sleep which is why no progress is being made in that book but I'm gonna go now because it is 20 minutes until I leave for yoga and before I do that I want to import my Ghibliathon TBR footage into my laptop just so it's all ready for when I come home and I can get straight into editing that. Hey don't mind me I just got out of the shower but um I finished Thunderhead by Neil Shusterman and that ending <laughs> That ending though, like the last 100 pages of this were filled with so much tension and there was little things going on and some things were happening and I was like, oh, it's, it's all going to be pretty much fine. But there was other little things that were going on that were kind of like, oh, well, this must be happening for a reason. And the way that they were just like slipping in every chapter was like a little bit sinister. And then the shit hit the fan and I was shook. So five stars to this. I absolutely loved it. I think for the majority of the book I liked it slightly less than I liked Scythe but that is because the main draw for me to Scythe was learning about the world. This was a bigger book to start off with so there were some parts that I didn't feel were as good as in Scythe just because like some things were drawn out a little bit more. There were also some paragraphs that I just didn't connect with very much it was weird it was kind of like I didn't understand the purpose of why that particular paragraph was thrown in etc but it's still a five star book I still really enjoyed it and that ending was stellar so I'm done with this so that's my second book and my second bookopoly book done on the is it the sixth today it's Thursday it's Thursday the sixth I think so. So this leaves me with a dilemma. I am still reading The Queens of Inislea, although I have only read one chapter and I know you probably don't believe me because you haven't seen the book at all next week, but I promise that at least on Sunday I will talk to you about it a little bit more because in this specific vlog I haven't said anything about it, like what it's about or anything, but I promise that if I don't do it before on Sunday I will let you know what it's about, how I'm feeling, where I'm up to, etc. But I'm on around page 205 of that. But my dilemma with that is, I don't have an ebook of that and I don't fancy buying one just for the ease of having it while I'm out and about tomorrow. So I have three bookopoly books left, which is Living Dead in Dallas by Charlene Harris, Record of a Spaceborn Few by Becky Chambers, and The Furies by Katie Lowe. I'm starting the Ghibliathon on Monday and my plan was to finish those two books that I've read and the Queens of Inislea by the end of the week so if I start one of these I'm likely going to be putting it down to pursue the Queens of Inislea over the weekend so I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. I could read a completely different book. I have two very short library books out one of which is the third book in the Wayward Children series and one is an Elantris novella so I could read one of those seeing as I have no library books on my TBR but with me taking a week out from Bookopoly and I still have two buddy reads Storm of Swords part two and these three to read in the last two weeks of the month do I really want to do that? I don't know like I'm really torn. This is in my Ghibliathon TBR so it's essentially between these two I just don't want to start one and then have to put it down. So I, I really don't know what I'm gonna do. Hey, long time no talk. So I need to just readjust this a little. So excuse the shirt, I've had a bit of a cleaning day. I've cleaned out my car. I also did the bathroom yesterday. I've had a shit couple of days essentially and this is still wonky, there we go. I've had a shit couple of days um, and I just wanted to hibernate in bed and play games. So I pretty much did. But I have a few things to tell you now. The first is that I have a parcel. This is from Gav, who knew that I was gonna have a shit couple of days. The reason why I had a shit couple of days is because yesterday was the anniversary, the one year anniversary, since my mum passed away, which is not something I'm incredibly vocal about. Um, at the time that it happened, like I did go into it a lot, and it's not something that's not known, like 
a lot of people do know that that happened but yeah it was just a really shit day. Gavin has been deep diving into my old videos and he found out that yesterday was going to be a really shit day <laughs> and he sent me something so um Gavin's just a sweet angel and I'm thankful that I know him and I'm thankful that he's on booktube and that he's such a great friend so we'll see what this is although I, <laughs> I think I know. Yeah Gavin! So this is the second of the Leatherbound Game of Thrones editions. This is Clash of Kings. I'll open it up. I'm not gonna get emotional today. It's another reason I didn't want to come on because like I, I didn't want to get emotional and I was very fragile yesterday. So um, Gavin bought me the first one of these up for my birthday. He has promised me that this is the last thing he's sending me for a while, which good because bro, you need to save your money. And these are essentially their beautiful editions. They come in slipcases. They have gold sprayed edges and they're like an old style of edition. And as well as that, they have beautiful illustrated end pages. So thank you so much, Gavin. You know that I will treasure this forever. Thank you for being such a great friend and making such a shitty weekend just a little bit less shitty. So for my reading update, I told you that I would be starting a book on Friday, but I hadn't decided what I was going to start. I started Record of a Space Bomb Few by Becky Chambers. This is the third book in the Wayfarers trilogy, so the final book. And this is a very character-driven science fiction series that follows different groups of people traveling through space. All three of them are companion novels, so you don't have have to read them in order but I would definitely recommend reading the first book and then you can read either the second or the third. So this book follows the sister of Ashby. Ashby is the captain on the ship that's present in the first book and this follows his sister and her family as well as multiple other perspectives. Both the second and the third book take place directly after and slightly during the events of the end of the first book and so you have like a nice timeline and you know where everything fits in. But this follows the people who live on the Exodus fleet and essentially what happened in the timeline of Earth regarding the rest of the universe is that Earth started to die and two things happened. The first thing that happened is that all of the rich people left and went to Mars and colonized Mars and then as the Earth was dying the rest of humanity or a portion of humanity managed to get on the Exodus fleet which is a group of spaceships that travels together through space. Now it has been a very long time, at least 10 generations I would say, since that happened but there are still groups of humans that are living on the Exodus fleet we have a meerkat and essentially this fleet is non-functional anymore. The humans have been accepted into the galactic, I think it's called the galactic commons, which is the governing body that rules over the majority of the races of the universe. Think of it like the EU, so it's a governing body that encapsulates a whole ton of different races. However, some humans have decided to stay on the Exodus fleet and everything's fallen apart. All of the other races and humans that have integrated into the rest of the galaxy have new technology and the humans are living in these rundown environments. <coughs> You okay? Let me rub your neck. You done? She's got a fair ball. You done? And while these, oh my God, Rosie. And while these crafts were intended to sustain life for a long period of time, oh my God. There's literally nothing I can do were back in business. So while these fleets were intended to sustain life for an extended period of time, it's kind of been a long time and the prologue centers on one of these ships in this fleet that combusted because it had technical fault and this is a great disaster in the memory of these people. So in this we do follow many characters with different perspectives on the fleet. We have Ashby's sister who was kind of left behind when he decided to go and adventure space and how she feels about still living on the Exodus fleet. We also have a teenager who is doing what he can to get out of there because he finds it boring and he wants to go explore the galaxy and we also have the perspective of somebody who is coming into the society because he's been on the outside and he knows how hard it is and he also knows that if he comes onto the Exodus fleet then he will never be hungry, he will always have somewhere to live and he really wants that stability in his life. 
there are a few other perspectives in this as well but i am up to page 105 of this i've read the first part and i'm really enjoying it don't know when i'll be picking this back up again hopefully i will wrap up my ghibli on tbr pretty quickly because i've made it quite manageable but i am really enjoying this i'm glad that i started it and i'm excited to continue now this weekend i haven't done a lot of reading i read 25 pages yesterday and i've read 20 ish so far today i did read about 50 on friday night though in the queens of Inneslea by tessa grattan i'm still really loving this and not a lot has happened so far but i do feel like this book is a lot of posturing it is based on king lear it's a king lear retelling and i haven't read king lear i think the next time the classic prompt comes up on Pocopoli, i'm going to select that and get a better understanding of the source material but thinking about shakespeare i don't think a lot is going to happen because there's not a lot of moments in high action in shakespeare because of the time that it was written and they didn't have all of these special effects and theatrical devices that they have now so i do think it is going to be very character driven and a lot of posturing between the characters the storyline of this is that we follow the three daughters of king lear and i believe that this is original to the Shakespeare play they are waiting for their father to decide which one of them will be the heir and it comes to a point where he kind of does that and they're not really happy with the outcome and we also have the king of a neighboring country and his perspective and also the bastard son of one of the lords of Lear who while he is generally liked among the populace is a bastard and has always been treated as such and he's kind of out for revenge on a personal level but on behalf of another kingdom as well so I'm absolutely loving this this is very very diverse the eldest daughter is genderqueer and also asexual and then we have the middle daughter who is kind of like a Sansa Stark character and then the youngest is a star priestess the writing in this is absolutely beautiful it's very Lainey Taylor-esque and I'm really loving it it's just very slow moving so it is taking me a while to get through but I just I, I know I'm gonna love this maybe not five stars because I am struggling to pick it up so much but like this happens with me and Sarah J Mass books sometimes like I just don't want to pick them up and Sarah J Mass books are some of my favorite books ever so I don't know if I mentioned but I'm on page 296 of this page 105 of this these are the books that I'm currently reading don't know when I'll be picking them up next week but I do have a battle plan for the Ghibliathon TBR like I've sectioned a lot of things off and I kind of know how I want to be reading across that week to get everything done so if all of that goes to plan which it most probably won't but if it does i will have time to pick up these or at least one of these sometime next week but until then these are probably on hold aside from what i'm gonna read tonight so i think that's about it for this week's vlog i'm not sure if it's a long one or not i need to um review the footage i'm gonna get started on editing it tonight but i hope you've enjoyed it regardless thank you so much for watching it if you've made it this far because i know vlogs are hella long and there's a lot of them to get through but please also don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to and i will see you next week guys bye oh you bite your friend like chocolate you say you're a go when nobody knows what comes in under our petticoats we're never gonna quit it no we're never gonna quit it no